right over the river in this picture. Potomac River is right there. I live right, it's hard to see it because of the trees, but the river is right there. And just over that river, you can see right there the Washington National Cathedral. And below that, with the naked eye, without the camera, is the Russian embassy. The Ukrainian embassy that you see me preaching and teaching at all the time is just over Key Bridge, which is in the right side of the picture, right there, George Washington Parkway, over Key Bridge, into Georgetown. Georgetown University sits right there. The reason I point all that out to you is that just over that river, it's two miles to the White House, three miles to Capitol Hill, some of the most momentous, important decisions in American history soon have to be made. And let me stress that again. Let me repeat that again. Some of the most powerful and important decisions in American history have to be made in the next few days and weeks, not, not months, not years, days, even hours. How committed is America to the Ukraine? How close does America want to be tied in? Do we commit our military our armed forces. A new Iron Curtain has descended. It's very red. The evil empire has risen from the dead. And what will our response be? We need to pray for our leaders. The Bible tells us over and over again that we are to pray for those who are in authority. We ought to pray for our rulers, kings, authorities, magistrates and whenever possible unless their laws violate the laws of God we are to obey them pay our taxes obey our governments but most importantly the scripture says so we can live peaceably we are to pray and to intercede for our government leaders now we're to pray for America we're to pray for our enemies like Russia we are to pray for our allies and friends like the Ukraine you know, it seems like it's a David and Goliath thing, doesn't it? Let me ask you a question. Do you think the Ukraine has even a remote chance? Do you think they have even a remote chance? Well, I don't know about you, but I believe in a God of miracles. Hallelujah. I believe in a God that can do the impossible. I believe in a God who can turn situations and circumstances around. How about you? Amen. Jesus said in Luke 18, 8, when, he, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Well, how about will he, when he comes, will he find faith in your heart? Faith in your home. Faith in your life. Faith in the family. We need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and pray for the Prince of Peace to come. Because World War III, Armageddon, World War III, Armageddon will not end until Jesus descends, until his feet stand, hallelujah, on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. Amen. The winner of World War III will be the Lord Jesus Christ. Not Gog, not Magog, not the kings of the east, not the, not the, not the Antichrist and his armies, but Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And everything that's happening in the papers and on the media, Everything that's going on is for one reason, and that is to tell you that Jesus is coming back again. This is part two of the series that I recently began, and we are talking about two things. If you want to put a broad title on the series, Jesus Christ and Antichrist. And notice it's Jesus first. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's not about Antichrist. Jesus Christ and Antichrist. The rise of the Antichrist means one thing. It means that Jesus Christ is coming. So don't be deceived and don't be deluded in a time of doctrines of demons, deception, and deluding. Everybody is speculating about who is the Antichrist. Well, as we study who the real Antichrist is, it's going to rule out a bunch of candidates 
<laughs> who are not the Antichrist. Zelensky is not the Antichrist. Putin is not the Antichrist. He is not even close to be qualified. Neither is Zelensky. Are you listening to me? Neither is Barack Obama. He, Barack Obama lives just over there in a neighborhood called Kalarama. It rhymes. Obama in Kalarama. He's not the Antichrist. He's not even close to being qualified. Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Emmanuel Macron, Boris Johnson, all of these people are not qualified. They're not even close to being qualified. So as we began the series, we started in the book of Daniel. I want you to take your Bible and turn to Daniel chapter 8. Turn to Daniel chapter 8 in the Old Testament, and we're going to pick up where we left off. And if you missed part one of the series, I strongly invite you and I strongly encourage you to go back, whoop, rewind in the archives, follow me, go back, hit that plus, and catch up and watch part one. Because what I'm teaching you is far more valuable than anything you'll learn on CNN or Fox or NBC or any other media outlet. Amen. Because I'm teaching you Bible prophecy. And we started giving clues, signs, traits, characteristics of the return of Jesus, the signs of the times, but also about the Antichrist. Who is the Antichrist. And we left off with point number 18, trait characteristic number 18. And we're, we're going to read it from chapter 8 and verse 23 of Daniel. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors were come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding, dark sentences shall stand up. Now, Revelation 13 verses 1 to 4. We're going to get to that eventually, but I'm just going to refer to it now. Revelation 13, 1 to 4, teaches that the beast rises from the sea. Now, it's talking about the seas of humanity. He rises from the sea. He is, in essence, a populist. He is a man of the people. He is not a politician in the strictest old school definition of the word. In other words, he's not a career lifelong politician. He's not a bureaucrat. He is somebody who comes out of humanity. He comes out of humanity and he rises from the sea. And this is the king that shall stand up who is known as the Antichrist. Now go on, let's go on reading in verse 24. Please follow along with me in your Bibles. Daniel chapter 8 and verse 24. And his power shall be mighty. This is not a weak man. This is not a small man. This is not a man who doesn't have power. His power will be mighty, but not by his own power. In other words, he has demons, devils, evil spirits, fallen angels behind him, just like Alexander the Great did, just like Napoleon did, Nero, Hitler, other conquerors, mighty power. So it's a, it's a metaphysical, it's, it's a superhuman strength. He is possessed by the devil and he shall destroy. He's a destroyer. He's an annihilator. But how does he do it? The word is wonderfully. It's an amazing word wonderfully, or the Hebrew scholars say that could have also been translated as fearfully, fearfully, fearfully. He shall destroy wonderfully or fearfully. This Antichrist, this is the 20th trait characteristic, he uses fear to destroy. And John 10, 10 says the thief comes to what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. This is, this is one who talks about the deal of all deals, but really it's not all about the art of the deal. It's about the art of the steal. Amen. And he comes to steal, kill, and destroy by the power of Satan. And he uses fear to do it. He's a fear mongerer. He intimidates people. He uses scare tactics. Amen. That's how the devil operates. Fear is the opposite of faith. Fear activates Satan the way Faith activates God. And keep reading in verse 24. 
not only shall he destroy wonderfully, he shall prosper. He shall prosper. He shall prosper. He shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. The word practice there invokes that there is a power, a cunning, sinister power behind this man. Shamanism, sorcery, seances, divination, familiar spirits, the power of the occult, practicing witchcraft. And that's what controls him, but also it uses the word prosper. Prosper. Characteristic number 21, he is a part of the prosperity gospel, the prosperity movement, and the money gospel. Chapter 11 and verse 36 bears this out. And also this ties in to the confession we read in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 of the last church of the church age known as Laodicea. They were laying up treasures. They were getting laid. They were lukewarm. And Jesus says their confession, their profession, their positive thinking, their positive confession, their faith confession is, and I quote, we are rich and increased with goods and we have need of nothing. It sound like some preachers you've heard on TBN, on CBN, on Daystar. Sound like Joel Osteen. Sound like uh, Joseph Prince. Sound like the purpose-driven message, the prosperity gospel, the word of faith. Sound like Paula White. Yeah. It sounds like Joyce Meyer and Kenneth Copeland and, and, and all the people that are behind that. He, he comes out of, and this is one of the great revelations that you're going to learn in this study. He comes out of... He comes out of that segment, that part of Christianity. And he uses it to destroy the mighty and the holy people. Let's look at verse 25. And through his policy, through his policy or his cunning, he shall cause craft, again, practice, witchcraft, craft, to prosper, there's prosper again, in his hand, and he shall magnify himself. We've already covered that in his heart. And by peace, peace, by peace shall he destroy many, and he shall stand up against the prince of princes, and he shall be broken without hand. Now that verse, we could, we could preach until the coming of the Lord just on verse 25. There is so much information in verse 25 that I don't even know really where or how to begin but but let's start by saying this he's a crafty man a cunning man of great deceit who knows witchcraft now i'm not talking about spooky type of witchcraft black witchcraft black magic i'm talking about white witchcraft i'm talking about the ones that you think are psychics and diviners the nice ones who read give you a palm reading. They read your palm reading, the crystal ball. They they don't seem scary. They seem like they're gonna help you. They they look at the, the horoscopes and, and they're gonna help you. And, and and you think they're operating by the power of God, but they're operating by the power of Satan. And they surround themselves with spiritual advisors who understand dark sentences. Now, are you beginning to, to get the picture? His spiritual advisors, his evangelical advisory committee, they profess and pretend to be preachers, but they're not preachers of the gospel. They're politicians. They're not preachers of the gospel as I am. They're not preachers of the gospel as I am. They're preachers of purpose, purpose-driven life, prosperity, positive confession, politics, pop music, psychology. It's another spirit, another Jesus, another gospel. It's not the Jesus and the gospel of the Bible. Now, as we exegete and exposit verse 25, and by the way, I'm right under the flight path of Ronald Reagan Airport. The planes you hear, <laughs> I need tattoo out here saying, get plane, get plane, boss, get plane. 
the plane, boss, the plane. The, they're going to Reagan Airport, which is right over there. I love the name of that airport, by the way, Ronald Reagan. What would Ronald Reagan do right now in this situation? How would Ronald Reagan handle World War III? How would Franklin Delano Roosevelt handle it? How would John F. Kennedy handle it? These are the questions that I've been asking recently as I've been preaching at these, these, these embassies right across the river. Amen. Verse 25, he says, here's how he destroys, and this is a stunning prophecy, by peace shall he destroy many. He, clue 24, he is a man of peace. He doesn't like endless wars. He doesn't like to get involved in foreign wars. He always says he's a man of peace, but yet he uses being a man of peace to destroy many. Now, Daniel 11, we'll get to it eventually, verse 21 and 24, bear this out, but a stunning verse of Scripture that I do want to turn to and introduce as evidence is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 3. We are talking here about the most important prophecies about the end times, the most important Scripture passages about the end times. And one that you have to see is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 3. We'll start with verse 1. Of the times and seasons, brethren, you, don't have, you have no need that I write you. For you yourselves know perfectly the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. When you least expect it, expect it. Amen? At midnight, it says in Matthew 25. At midnight, the midnight cry. For when they shall say, again, their confession. What are you saying? What are you confessing with your mouth? When they shall say, peace and safety, oh, it's all good, COVID's over, there's no new variant of COVID, it's all, all clear, we can, we, can, um, we, can take, we can take the mask off, we can, we can take the mask off, it's all clear, it's all good, all good, we can take the mask off, we can take the mask off. We don't have to social distance anymore. Get rid of the mask. Throw it away. When they shall say peace and safety, it's all good. We're all back to normal. When the Antichrist comes and intervenes and temporarily stops this invasion from Gog and Magog into Ukraine and negotiates a peace deal protecting Israel, protecting NATO, protecting America, and all the media says, well, the war is over. Putin has been stopped. Russia has been stopped. Israel dwells as a land in unwalled villages in peace and safety. COVID is over. All good. Party on. Eat, drink, and to be merry. Just like the days of Noah. When they shall say peace and safety, brace yourself, fasten your spiritual seatbelts, then sudden destruction. I didn't write the Bible, I just know the one who did. Sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, birth pains. They're separate, but they get closer together. They're weak, but they get more and more intense, and they shall not escape. Now, we're going to return to that chapter later in the series, but I just wanted to introduce it into, into the consciousness of your mind so you can be aware. Don't believe everything you hear. Don't be naive. Listen to me. Don't be gullible. Don't be stupid. Are you, are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Don't believe everything you see on the media. Don't believe all the videos that you watch. And when they come and they talk about peace and safety, it's all good. Don't believe it. Because the scripture says, then sudden destruction. The city behind me, Washington, D.C., the great city, the great city that I preached from a month, five, six weeks ago, New York City, where those videos went, I don't know if, it, if they trended or they went viral, I don't know the numbers, but they got 610,000 people watched one of them, and a whole lot more of them got way up in the thousands of views. But New York City and Washington and the great cities of America and the cities of the world are in for sudden destruction. And when you read the Bible, the book of Revelation, billions die. A third of the world, a quarter of the world, 
You read scriptures that are stunning, that are staggering, that shake you to the very core of your being about billions dying. The God variant is coming. COVID is not over. Coronavirus is not over. The God variant is coming. The scripture says there are seven last plagues. You ain't seen nothing yet. The worst is yet to come. I know this is sobering. I know this is not what you want to hear. I know you want to see me get up and, and, uh, and dance. I know you want to see me get up and dance. I know you don't want to hear me sing, but I know you want me to be positive. I know you want me to be happy. I know a lot of y'all just want me to put a ball cap on, put a ball cap on and be cool. Put the shades on, take the jacket off, get some jeans with some holes in them, like Stephen Furtick. You put the, put the ball cap on backwards and preach the Justin Bieber gospel. Preach the Justin Bieber gospel. That's what a lot of y'all want to hear. A lot of y'all, I'm going to take this foolishness off. A lot of y'all want me to tickle your ears. But, 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 but I'm not doing that. I'm not Elevation Church. I'm not Hillsong Church. I'm not Victory Christian Center. I'm not Family Worship Center. I'm not TBN. I'm not trying to get ratings. I'm not trying to get followers. I don't preach to be liked. I preach to be right. I don't preach to trend. I preach truth. I don't preach to go viral. I preach viral verses of Scripture. Amen. I'm not, I'm not in this for money. I'm not for profit, P-R-O-F-I-T. I'm a P-R-O-P-H-E-T, prophet of Almighty God, a non-profit man of God. So follow me. Follow Evangelist Mike Dahl. Follow at Daryl Dahl Zero on TikTok as we follow Christ, not cash. We don't follow cash. We follow Christ. And that is the reason that you can trust us. That is the reason that you can listen to us and follow us as we follow Christ. Now, I want you to notice clue 25 that he's a man of signs and wonders. Daniel 8:24 his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. His power shall be mighty. Now in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, is an amazing passage that is one of the most important passages as far as eschatology or the last things is concerned. And you have to understand this. You have to understand this. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I really should preach the whole chapter and eventually we will. But I want you to notice verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. Let no man deceive you by any means. Now skip down to verse number 9. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, this is about the Antichrist, whose coming is after the work of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they may be saved. Do you love the truth? Or do you like preachers and teachers and politicians who tell you lies? And for this cause, God will send strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And that's where we are right now. We are in a new spiritual dark age of deception and of delusion. So, so when you see a so-called preacher, a so-called evangelist, do a so-called miracle, a so-called sign, a so-called wonder, a so-called healing, a so-called gift of the Spirit, instead of accepting it and say, oh, well, that's just God confirming that he or she is a man of God, instead, you are to question it. Instead, you are to examine it. You are to try the spirits to see whether they be of God. Is it the spirit of Jesus Christ or is it the spirit of Antichrist? Now, Jesus said the same thing. He said, many false prophets shall come in my name doing lying, false signs, wonders, and miracles. And that's why I say don't believe what you see. Don't believe what you see on TVN. Don't believe what you see on social media or on apps and websites. We are not to be led by what we see. Faith doesn't come by what we see. Faith comes 
by what we hear. So you need to turn off the TV, turn off the movies, turn off the internet, amen, get away from all that and read the Word of God and study the Word of God because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So the clue is he is a man of signs and wonders. Verse 25 of Daniel says that eventually he takes on Jesus directly and he loses. He'll stand up against the Prince of Princes, that's Jesus but he shall be broken without hand. Look, we know who's going to win at Armageddon, and it's not the devil. Hallelujah. The devil is cast into the lake of fire, the Antichrist, the beast, the false prophet, the lake of fire forever. This fight is fixed. We know who's going to win. So don't play on the losing team. Believe my gospel. My gospel is a deal only a fool would ever reject. Don't play for a loser. The devil is a defeated foe. He's a loser. He's a loser. Jesus is the winner, and Jesus is the champion. Now, when does all of this stuff happen? I don't want to get too deep into theology. I don't want to blow your minds. I don't want to go over your head, but, but there's some basics of spirituality of, of the end times that you need to understand. When is all this going to happen? In something called Daniel's 70th week. In Daniel chapter 9, starting in verse 24, you need to hear this. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the prophecy. Now, there is, he's talking about a week of years. A week of years. It means seven years. Daniel's 70th week is also the time of Jacob's trouble. It is the period of great tribulation. Jesus said there will be great tribulation such as the world has never seen. It's going to get worse. You ain't seen nothing yet. The world is literally going to blow up and go to hell in a handbasket. And all of this, verse 24, is because of Israel. It all revolves around Israel. Israel is God's prophetic time clock, and God is dealing with Israel. It says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people, Israel. Let me say it for the record. Listen up. If you've ever heard a preacher, hear me now. It's all about Israel. It's not about the Ukraine. It's not about the United States of America or Russia or China. Are, they all have a part to play. Believe me. They all have a part to play in the end time picture scenario. But it's all about Israel. And so then he prophesies exactly when Jesus is going to come in verse 26. He tells you when Messiah the Prince will be cut off, but not for himself. That's the cross. But after that, after what happened in A.D. 70, we come to Daniel 9, 27. And he, that is the Antichrist, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That is a week of years. That is seven years. Seven years. And in the midst of the week, 1,260 days, 3.5 years, in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. This is the abomination of desolation that Jesus was talking about in Matthew 24. So that is a, a basic cursory explanation of Daniel's 70th week. And that is a crucial prophecy that you need to understand. The people who are saying it's not about Israel, the people who are saying Israel has been replaced, replacement theology with America, that's a lie. It's heresy. It's an abomination from the pit of hell. It's all about Israel. It's always been about Israel. It is about Israel. And it will all be about Israel. Amen. Now, I want you to look at 827. Daniel 827. Notice it said here in 927, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Seven years. Now, what kind of covenant is he talking about? Well, He's talking about a peace deal. He's talking about a peace deal. And that's what 825 said. By peace shall he destroy many. By peace shall he destroy many. Daniel 9, 27 is a startling prophecy. And based on this, I'm telling you there will be a peace deal. There will be a peace deal, and the current war that's going on will stop. It shall cease temporarily. There shall be a ceasefire for an 
for an indeterminate period, and then it will get hot again. And during that peace deal, a lot of things are going to happen, and that is when the Antichrist will be revealed. Will be revealed for all to see. So, Clue 27, he executes a peace and protection treaty with and for Israel. And what it will be simply is a massive expansion of the Abraham Accords. A massive expansion, adding many more nations to the Abraham Accords. And as I told you from 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 3, the slogan of the Antichrist is peace and safety. I will protect you from the invading armies. I will protect you from COVID. Peace and safety. Don't believe everything that you hear. Daniel 9, 27, this is clue 28, indicates to us that in the middle of the tribulation period, three and a half years, 1,260 days, he will outlaw freedom of religion. He will outlaw freedom of religion. He will turn on the true church and persecute the true church. He will turn on Israel, and Israel will suffer persecution the likes of which she has never seen in her whole history. Even worse, even worse than the Holocaust. Let that sink in for a moment. A second Holocaust is coming. A new wave of anti-Semitism is coming. It's all about Israel, and it's not positive. It's not positive. It's negative. We read this as well in Daniel chapter 10 and verse 14. It's all about Israel. Now, I want you to flip with me to the 11th chapter of Daniel now. Daniel chapter 11, and read all this as your homework. I'm just giving you the highlights. Daniel 11 and verse 21 for our next clue. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person. Who does that remind you of? The Antichrist will be a vile human being. A vile person. He will be nasty. He will be filthy. He will be dirty. He will be rotten. He will be profane. A vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably. There's that word peace again. The word peace is a huge clue. Whoever the Antichrist is, the beast is, he constantly uses the word peace. He's constantly opposed to war. He appears to be, on the outside at least, a man of peace. And, and here's a, another, another stunning clue. And he shall obtain the kingdom by flatteries or by intrigue, the Hebrew scholars tell us. He shall obtain the kingdom by flatteries. What? That is so dramatic. What, what does this mean? It means he's a man of intrigue. He is a man of mystery who obtains his kingdom by flattery. That's also uh, repeated in chapter 11, verse 34. Intrigue. You know what he says? in his speeches, in his rallies. Oh, he's great. Oh, she's great. Oh, aren't that great. Aren't, that, aren't they great? Isn't that great? What a great thing. He uses that word great, and he uses it to build people up, to buttress them, to make them feel good about themselves, to flatter them. He, he praises them. Now, he cuts people down. That's one aspect of the bully, but he also obtains his kingdom by flattery. He kisses their you-know-what. He tells them there, you know what, doesn't stink. Flattery. And it doesn't just say it one time. It says it several times. Look at verse 22. And with the arms of a flood shall they be overthrown from before him and shall be broken. Yea, the prince of the covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. He shall work deceitfully. Deceitfully. It constantly... Here in verse 22 is one place, calls him a prince. Here's the next clue. He sees himself as a prince. He sees himself as a prince. Now, he's not altogether wrong. Ephesians 2.2 2 talks about the devil, and, and, and the Antichrist 
functions as a son of Satan the way Jesus is the son of God. And Satan is called in Ephesians 2.2 2, the prince of the power of the air or the airwaves. So he sees himself, his self-image is as a prince. And he conducts himself with a, an aura that I'm better than you, I'm superior to you, I'm a prince. But what he is, is he's controlled by the principalities and powers that Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 12 talk about. He is demon-possessed. And his kingdom is ultimately given to him by Satan. Now let's look at verse 23. The league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. Deceitfully, deceitfully, deceitfully. The next clue, he operates by deceit with and from a small base. Verse 24, and he shall enter peaceably or by prosperity. Peace and prosperity are his slogan. Those are his symbols. Amen. He shall enter by peacefully even upon the fattest places of the province, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches, Yea, he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds, even for a time. Notice the word devices. Notice the word devices here. Demon, demonic, devilish devices. He operates from deceit and, next clue, he will accomplish more than his ancestors. His ancestors accomplished some things, but scripture says he is greater than his ancestors. Now let that sink in for a moment. He, verse 24, teaches us, is very rich. The Antichrist cannot be a poor man. He has to be a multi-billionaire. He's very rich, and he is the master of electronic devices. He shall forecast his devices. That's what it says. He shall forecast his devices against the strongholds. He is a master of electronic devices upon which he devises evil. This is not some backward man who doesn't understand how to use tech, how to use Twitter, how to use Facebook and Instagram and even TikTok. This is not a man who is not a master of the media. This is not a man who doesn't understand television and reality TV. Now let's get a little further into his mind. I want you to go down to verse 28. We talk about his mischief in, in verse 27. In verse 28, then he shall return unto his land with great riches. Again, no poor guy can be Antichrist. It's all about the money with the Antichrist. Money, money, money. Dollar signs. Dollar, dollar, dollar. Money, money, money. And his heart shall be against the holy covenant. Trait characteristic 35, his heart is against Israel. His heart is against Israel. Even though his words are for Israel, it's a deception. He says he's for Israel. His words indicate he's for Israel, but ultimately his actions indicate and reveal the opposite. And he shall do exploits and return to his own land. He shall do exploits and return to his own land. This guy, the Antichrist, is the ultimate showman. He is the ultimate entertainer. But his showing and his entertaining inflicts damage that we can't even conceive. But he's a man of exploits. He is a showman. He is a show-off. It's all about me. Look what I have done. But he's not a stupid man. He's not an ignorant man. He's not a dumb man. As a matter of fact, just the opposite. Look at verse 30. For the ships of Chidom shall come against him. Therefore he'll be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence. And have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. This is a man who understands information, technology. This is a man who is intimately affiliated and knows the leaders of Silicon Valley. This is a man of data. This is a man of analytics. This is a man of great intelligence who's very smart, even a genius. 
Let that sink in. Even of genius intelligence. But what he uses his smarts for is not smart. It's actually dumb. He conspires against Israel. But we're not done. It doesn't stop there. Go to 31. Arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and place the abomination that makes desolate. And then verse 32. Brace yourself. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. There's the word flattery again. Isn't she great? Isn't he great? You're beautiful. You're great. You're beautiful. Corrupt by flatteries. Now notice the word corruption. The Antichrist, though he claims to try to correct corruption, while he claims to not be crooked, the Antichrist will be the most corrupt and crooked man who has ever lived in the history of humanity. He is a corrupt man of collusion, and he colludes with other evil leaders and forms, it talks about the ten kings that will be with him, forms alliances with other people who are corrupt. He colludes. He is involved with Gog and Magog, Russia and Putin. Verse 31. Arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. Clue 39. He is a man of pollution. Whoever the Antichrist is will not be a tree hugger. See all these trees out here? Tree huggers? Look at the trees. Look at the trees. He's not going to be a tree hugger. And by the way, y'all people who are into green, climate change, global warming, the only tree you need to hug is the tree of Calvary. That's just true. Amen. But that having been said, I'm also for protecting the environment. But this guy, this 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 Antichrist, he's not going to be a tree hugger. He's not going to be on the side of the environment. He's going to say energy, big companies, big corporations, make profits. It's just about making money. He's going to say, you know, drill, baby, drill. Let the, let the pipelines go. Let's produce. And all about money, all about the bottom line. He is a man of pollution. He is a man of pollution. Now go down to verse 36. And the king, Antichrist, shall do according to his will. Shall do according to his will. Next clue. He is a self-willed man. He is a self-willed man. And he is a strong-willed, strong man who exalts himself. Strength is very important to this man. He wants you to think he's, he's bigger than you. He wants you to see his bigness and his greatness and his strength as he projects strength and never weakness and never admits defeat. He shall do according to his will. He shall exalt himself. We've already covered that. And magnify himself above every God. Time out. Time out. Here's a huge, massive clue. He has a God messiah complex and he is and he acts as a demigod celebrity worship ladies and gentlemen celebrity worship celebrity worship is the biggest sin in america today worshiping actors athletes activists and authorities celebrity worship worshiping men and women as gods and goddesses we do that in pornography if you're looking at it and lusting after it, you're worshiping it. Those TV shows you watch for hours and on end, those videos, streaming videos and movies from Amazon Prime and Apple TV and Netflix, on and on and on and Hulu, you're worshiping. What you're watching, you're worshiping. Well, the Antichrist will play into that. He will magnify himself above every God. He wants to be worshiped. He wants to be worshiped. He exalts himself and he wants you to exalt him. He magnifies himself and he wants you to magnify him. He has a God Messiah complex and he is a demigod. Now keep reading. And shall speak. It's all about his words. He's a great communicator. You think Reagan was a great communicator. The Antichrist is the greatest communicator. 
You think Reagan was the Teflon president and nothing stuck to Reagan, nothing stuck to Reagan. This guy is the ultimate Teflon president. Antichrist. You know, they can impeach him, it doesn't stick. They can accuse him, 15, of sexual assault, it doesn't stick. He's Teflon. And he shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods. He shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods. Clue 41. Clue 42, he's a great speaker. He can command an audience. He can make them stand and yell, much like Hitler used his speeches to motivate the Third Reich and to build his empire. He's a great speaker, and he's an unusual, even marvelous communicator. And we see in the verse, and shall prosper until the indignation be accomplished. Again, the constant use of the word prosper or prosperity links him to the whore of Babylon, to the false harlot apostate church that we read about in Revelation chapter 18. For your homework assignment, read all of Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18. Now, let's go to verse 37. Let's go to verse 37. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. Whoa. He will have ancestry. Ancestry.com. He will have a lineage, DNA, genetics, from a certain country. But his heritage loved God, and they feared God. But he doesn't. He has no real regard for God or gods. He rejects the faith of his German ancestry and German ancestors who were part of the Protestant movement. Clue 44, same verse. Same verse, verse 37. Nor the desire of women. And that, that, that does not mean, a lot of false teaching, that does not mean he's gay or homosexual, just the opposite. It says he will not regard or respect the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. What this means is he has no regard or respect for women. He has no respect for women. To the Antichrist, women are simply sex objects. He uses women. He abuses women, he harasses women, and he molests women. He is Me Too's ultimate nightmare. And then when he's done with them, once, twice, keep counting, when he is done with them, he breaks his commitment to them. There's a lot of misconception about the Antichrist. Somebody said he's Jewish. No, no, he claims to be Christian. That's why it's called Antichrist. He comes out of Christianity. He's not Jewish. He's not from the tribes of Israel. He is a so-called supposed Christian. Get over your misconceptions. This guy is called the man of sin. Possibly he's a man who would own casinos, who promotes gambling, who has multiple divorces. So Brother Mike, some of y'all say, how do you know this? How do you know this? Well, in this book of Daniel, it tells us that Daniel read the handwriting on the wall. Well, that's what prophets do. Daniel had visions and Daniel interpreted dreams. That's what prophets do. I do the same thing. Bill Gates <laughs> wrote code that changed the world. Bill Gates wrote code, I break code. I break the Solomon code. I give you the COVID code. And that's why you should follow Evangelist Mike Dow because I'm God's code breaker. I solve the mysteries. God reveals it. God reveals his secrets to the prophets of God. And today, in this series, I'm giving you the beast code. I am giving you the Antichrist code, the 666 code. 
And part of this, in verse 37, it says, nor will he regard any God. Why? Because he thinks he is God. That's clue 45. He thinks he is God. He thinks he is God. And he has all kind of idols, images, icons, and likenesses that he follows, and one of which is revealed in verse 38. Verse 38, But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, or the God of fortresses, the God of forces. And a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver, precious stones, and pleasant things. What does this mean, he honors the God of forces or fortresses? Well, it means that he pays tribute to the military and to veterans and the armed forces with his lips all the time. He honors the armed forces. And you think about Germany. Germany had been disarmed, non-military, defeated. But the, all that changed, didn't it? All that changed, didn't it? Now, talk about the God of forces. It could also mean the force. George Lucas, Star Wars, the force, which evokes the occult, witchcraft, the force and not the faith. America today is crazy about the force from Disney and science fiction, but not the faith. They're chasing Harry Potter, but they're not chasing Jesus Christ. Amen. So forces... Forces are big to him, and powerful demonic forces will control the Antichrist. And he all, well, what's the purpose of using it? Verse 39, thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God, strange women, strange gods, strange apparel, and strange religions. Characterize this man with a strange God who he shall acknowledge and increase with glory and he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain, for gold, for gain, for gold, for gain, for gold. He is all about using military power for gain and for profit. That's our next clue. It is a dramatic fulfillment of Bible prophecy, ladies and gentlemen, that a businessman and a multi-billionaire became president of the United States. For the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of Antichrist. Go to verse 40. And at the time of the end, that's the end of the tribulation, the end of Daniel's 70th week, at the battle of Armageddon, at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north, Putin, Gog and Magog, Russia, shall come against him, this is Armageddon, like a whirlwind with chariots and horsemen and with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. Ultimately, this is clue 48, the Antichrist is attacked by the kings of the north, Russia, Gog and Magog, by the kings of the south, the Arabs in Africa, by the kings of the east, the 200 million man army of Red China, in Israel, in Armageddon, in what the Bible describes as a great war. Daniel 11, verse 41. This is the scenario described in Ezekiel chapter 38 and chapter 39 and Revelation 16, which we are beginning to see now played out in infancy in the Ukraine, but which will not be about Ukraine. World War III will be about and in Israel. So in this, he is troubled and he is betrayed not only by Russia, the king of the north, but also by China, the kings of the east. I want you to look at verse 44. But tidings out of the east, east of Jerusalem, draw it on a line, is red China, the kings of the east. Tidings of the east and out of the north, draw a direct line from Jerusalem north, it's Russia, the prince of Rosh. Tidings out of the east and the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. Clue 50. He is a man of great fury and great rage with a bad temper and anger. He is an annihilator and he is a destroyer. 
Clue 51, verse 45. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. And I like this. Get ready to shout. And yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. As we conclude today, and we'll pick up this in our next message, he meets his Waterloo in Israel. He meets his Waterloo in Israel. He meets his Waterloo in Israel. 12.1. At that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which stands for the children of thy people, the children of Israel. This is what's happening. And there shall be a great trouble such as that was never seen. Period of tribulation. That's the tribulation period. It's all about Israel. It's all about Israel. And then down in verse 4, a stunning prophecy of the Bible. Oh, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. That's where we are right now. Many shall run to and fro. These planes flying over. The transportation revolu revolution. These planes flying over. And, brace yourself, knowledge shall be increased. Knowledge shall be increased. The Bible prophesied the information superhighway. The Bible prophesied the information revolution. Daniel said it thousands of years ago. And in 12.7, he talks about a time, times, and half a times. 3.5 years or 1,290 days to 1,355 days are huge, huge clues. Huge, huge clues. Bless it. Do you want to be blessed? The end of Daniel is he that waits and comes to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. But go thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand at thy lot at the end of days. At the end of days. And that's where we are. We are at the end of days. I didn't finish today. There's a lot more. Stay tuned. Follow Evangelist Mike Dial. Follow Daryl Dial Zero to contribute, to donate, to give an offering, send to my Venmo, Venmo at Evangelist Mike Dial. One word, capital E for Evangelist, capitalize M for Mike, capitalize D for Dial, at Evangelist Mike Dial. Pastors, invite me to come speak in your church, in person, for meetings, for revival, camp meeting, conferences, conventions, special speakers. Area code 703-405-1942. 703-405-1942 and I'll come for in-person brick and mortar revival teaching services whatever we want to do until I talk to you again and continue the series this is evangelist Mike Dial reminding you even in the time of World War III Jesus is still your answer amen amen